Welcome to the man card. Today we've got a stitching horse is what I put together. Sorry, I'm not going to show you how to actually build this one step by step. I've got some pictures and some images. I'll walk you through kind of what I did. This one was more of a scrap project. I had a bunch of scrap wood laying around and I wanted to build something. So I put two of these together. One of them's for one of my buddies down in Texas and uh, the other one's for me. So let me show you kind of what they are, show you around them, how they work, basic idea, and uh, what you can do to make your own. So the basic idea behind a stitching horse is so you can have your hands free and still do the work that you need to. Um, you have these jaws which can be open and closed via a leather strap that hangs down to the side and put a little pressure with your foot to hold them tight. Put my piece in there, put my foot in, keeps that pressure on so that I can work on that leather piece <clears throat> without having to hold it between my knees or something I can be able to do my stitching and get things done that way. With these jaws, I've created it so that I can take and do either a straight on stitch or I can loosen them up underneath and rotate it 90 degrees. That then allows me to take and hold the piece this direction. So it's pretty versatile. Depends on what you're looking to do with it and how you want to use it. So like I said, this is more of a scrap wood project. I had some 2x4s laying around. It's basically just an A-frame leg on there, on the back. Got 15 inch bevels on both ends, so 15, sorry, 15 inch, 15 degrees. 15 degrees on each side, 16 inches tall. And on the front, I just took a piece of 2x6 that I had. Same thing, 16 inches tall. And then you can see Underneath the three quarter inch piece of oak, I've taken and built a couple of two by fours in for extra stability when you're sitting on that. And then you have your cross member across the bench itself. Underneath the clamp jaws, I just drilled a hole straight through. And what I've got is just a fly nut that allows me to loosen and tighten those jaws to rotate them 90 degrees or whichever angle I need to work on my uh, piece of material. And then, the same goes for my foot stand here. It's just got a uh, fly nut on there that I can use to tighten and uh, pull down on my material. Give you a closer look at the mechanism. So the jaws, I've just got a U-bolt that goes through, holding the leather strap into place. Runs down to another U-bolt down there on the pedal. If you look in here, you can see the bolt that goes all the way through. Basically just a hinge on one side. These jaws are made of three-quarter inch material with another three-quarter inch piece of material here with an angle cut. That's a 45 all the way up to the top. And then I've just taken and uh, covered that with some extra leather. When this hinge is open, it drops your material. <laughs> when the hinge is open, you kind of see how it operates. The foot pedal, if that makes sense. Pretty simple contraption. On the strap here on the side, I've created a belt style hole and buckle, which allows me to adjust the height or length of the uh, strap so that if I have a thicker piece that I'm working on up top, I can take and give myself a little more length so it's not awkward to have my foot at a weird angle, high or low. For the seat, I had some high density foam that I used on the top, just a nice cushion padding versus sitting on the hard wood for extended periods of time. Underneath I have a half inch piece of plywood. I put the foam on top of that, I wrapped my leather around it, and then I stapled it along the bottom. And then underneath that, after I formed it, you can see I've got a few screws that then hold the seat in place. That's basically it. They're pretty simple. Um, there's plenty of plans online. I just wanted to give you another option for some ideas and styles that you may be able to go with. These are done on a budget. I just used the extra wood I had laying around. You don't need to use oak for the main boards across the top. You can always grab just a piece of uh, 
one by 10 pine material and just make sure you put some good support underneath it with those two by fours. And that's basically it. I'll show you me using these in a couple of videos. I've got some nice sheaths and a couple other things I'm going to be making. So stay tuned and I'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching.